If you have a Bible, go over to Acts chapter 16. Today is the final part of at midnight, at midnight, at midnight. And we're going to start in Acts chapter 16. If you've got a Bible, you can read along with us. If not, we'll put it on the board behind me. And as we go through Scripture today, I want you to see this on the canvas of your imagination. I want you to put yourself in this story. Verse number 16 starts off this way. It says, now it happened as they went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master as much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and I, us, and she cried out saying, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. So this went on for a while. But Paul was greatly annoyed. He was like, I'm tired of this. And he turned to the spirit and said, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it came out in that very hour. But when her master saw that the hope of their prophet was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, and they drug them into the marketplace and to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews, they exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which aren't lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. So they're like, we don't want this whole God thing, okay? And the multitude, watch this, they rose up together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothing and they commanded them to be beaten with rods. Now, some of us backslide if God just don't give us the new promotion that we want, but these people are being stripped naked, and they're being beat for their faith, and their faith gets stronger in persecution. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. And having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison. He fastened their feet to stocks. Now, watch this. So they're fastened here, right? In verse 25, it says, but at midnight, somebody say, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Hold on, stop right there. Notice what it does not say. It doesn't say they were upset at God, angry at God, offended at God, bitter towards God. It does not say they went to the bar, started playing the star, and they backslid and was offended at the church and offended at God and offended at their small group leader and everything. The Bible says that they were praying and singing hymns to God. And I believe that's a word for somebody who's here today, that you need to get more spiritual. And sometimes we try to fight in our flesh. And if you fight by the flesh, you'll fail. But if you fight with your faith, you'll prevail. And sometimes when you're in the darkest moments of your life, and that's what at midnight is. Midnight is the darkest moment of our day. Anybody ever been through a dark moment spiritually before? You're in a dark season right now. Your marriage ever been in a dark place before? When you're in a dark place, don't get in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What does that word mean? That means that they're not of this world. They are not natural. They're not worldly. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That means that instead of getting in your flesh, you need to get a little bit more spiritual. And that's what Paul and Silas was doing in their darkest moments. They ain't cuss everybody out. They ain't get on online looking for love in the wrong places. They weren't trying to drink and smoke all their problems away. The Bible says that at midnight, in the darkest time of their life, they were praying and they were singing unto God. Come on, somebody. And most of y'all know this story. And so what happened is that the prison doors was open. The shackles come undone. And the Bible says that the prison doors of everybody else was opened as well because your praise doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody who's around you. And one of the greatest miracles we have in the Bible comes after verse number 25 because they were praying and they were singing to God. I like to say it this way, that they were praying and praising. There's something powerful. When you get, you got to pray and you got to praise your way out of darkness. You, there's something about the person that when hell breaks out around you, if you can get a tad more spiritual and pray and praise, watch prison doors be open. And so today's message is entitled Kingdom Praise. And I was thinking about this title. I didn't know I wanted, I was going to make it simple, like how to praise or the power of praise. But I wanted to like make it different than the praise that you do naturally, because many of us, we understand natural praise. You praise people that are athletes. They got a gold medal. We give them all kinds of praise. We love to praise people who are successful. Maybe they sold so many albums or they have so many millions of followers on YouTube. We know how to praise men, but praise is really intended first and foremost to God. And so I am not talking about a natural worldly praise today. I'm talking about a kingdom praise. Somebody say a kingdom praise. And I just hope you came to church ready to give them praise. Because at the end of this today, 
I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something with what you heard today, and we're going to bust this place online. Wherever you are, you better go ahead and move the couch out the way because we're about to give God praise today. Okay? And so hopefully you didn't come to church today to check the box and say, I did something spiritual today. It's probably ain't going to be the right atmosphere for that. <laughs> Hope you ain't come to church today just because you wanted everybody to see your new outfit and your makeup because it's going to get messed up today. Did anybody come to church to dance before God? Came? We got like three radical people. Everybody, like, I, don't, I don't know about dancing. I ain't dancing a long time, Pastor. <laughs> Did anybody come to shout to the Lord today? I don't know. I don't know. Come on online. Did anybody come or watch to sing to God today? Did anybody come to sing? I don't know. Listen, listen, listen. That's a trick question. That's a trick question. Because many people are like, well, I don't know. That's just not what I do. That's just not what I do. You know, the dancing and everything. That's what they do. That's just not what I do. You know, the singing and everything. I'm pitchy, so I keep it to myself. You know, and, and we do this thing, and I believe the Lord is asking us today to lay aside our preconceived ide ideologies about what we think praise is, okay? Because some of us were prejudiced. And I'm not talking about racially prejudiced, because if that's you, God knows you need deliverance. We've all been made in the image and likeness of God. Would the church please say amen? amen. But I'm talking about the root meaning of the word, like, prejudge. And we love the prejudge situations. We love the prejudge situations, atmospheres, people groups. We love to prejudge them like, well, praise, I don't know, that's just, I do it like this. You know, the Pentecostals, you know, they're like, they, they do that stuff. You know, they kind of run around and they dance and they swing off the chandeliers and they're holy rollers, but not us. We have quiet worship. We, we kneel and we get down. We don't do, that's not the church I came from. So you prejudge something about somebody else that you don't even know because if you knew what I've been through, you knew why I give them praise the way that I do, but you don't even know. Oh, we, we, lo we love prejudgment. We love to say, oh, that's the charismatics. And most of y'all don't even know what that word means. But somebody in some church told you something negative about them, so you, you bring that prejudice mindset now into your reality, and you prejudge something that you ain't even looked in the Bible to figure it out for yourself. And you say, you know what? No, that's not me. I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert. What does your personality have to do with your praise? See, sometimes we hide out under what we're comfortable with. And you know, no, I'm not going to shout to the Lord. I don't want to dance because I don't, I don't do all of that. You know, that's just not what I do. And we conclude something without fact-checking our behavior with the Scripture. And that's why your boy in the house today is about to get on up in here. In church, I've been pastoring now 14 years, about to celebrate 15, 20 years of ministry. And what I've realized is that people love titles. They love to say, well, I'm a Catholic, and I'm a Southern Baptist. Or they love to say, I'm an atheist and agnostic. Or they love to say, I'm black or I'm white. They love titles. And I believe what God is asking us to do today is to put down that which is man-made to exalt that which is God-made. Because sometimes we have cornered ourselves in tribalism. We love tribalism. I'm a Celtics fan. You're a Lakers fan. I'm from the North. You're from the South. You know, we, it's, it, we love we versus them. We love it. And when it comes to race, listen, I'm not asking for you to not love your culture and where you come from. I'm just asking for you to exalt that which is God-made over that which is man-made. And some of you all are more black than you are Christian. I'm coming for you today. Some of you all love your skin color and you love your culture more than you do the cross and the blood. Some of you all have more gay pride and more black pride than you do pride in the power of God moving through your life. And you give yourself a title and an assignment that God knows. Is, any, is this thing on today? Anybody online? And don't get mad at me because I'm giving you kingdom truth. It's amazing. I, I, I got to preach to somebody today. Do you know that race as we know it, black, white, yellow, brown, red, does not come from the Bible? It is completely man-made. But on social media, nobody will tell you that. They'll tell you that it's supposed to be we versus them, whoever the them is, whether it's the Koreans or the Nigerians or the Mexicans. If you're not like me, then you're one of them. And I want to congregate with me, and it's we versus them, but not in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, it's we versus the devil. Hold on, because in the eyes of God, listen, there's not multiple races. There's one race. The human race. And as long as you are a homo sapien, come on somebody, you can be a dark homo sapien, a, a white bright homo sapien, a polka dot homo sapien, come on somebody. But we love to prejudge 
people and situations. I don't praise like that. That's what the Pentecostals do. You know, the non-denominational folks, they do that. But what does the Bible say about praise? Now, I, I need to teach some things today. Somebody say, say teach, teacher. Because I came with an anointing today. Because some of y'all give them a, a, a pandemic praise. <laughs> and your pandemic praise is weak. <laughs> I was sitting there, we singing, build your church, build it from the ground. Up. Well, build it from the ground. Come on. <laughs> some of y'all need to release a praise <laughs> where walls fall down. Come on. Some of y'all need to release a praise where generational curses are broken. And the devil has masked your praise in this season, and we about to let it go today. Come on online. You should have came to church today. But anyhow, I love y'all. But here's the thing. I know how you feel. I was that guy when I first started coming to church. I didn't want praise. I remember people asked me to lift my hands in worship, and I stand just like this. They say, everybody lift their hands. I do like that because I was uncomfortable. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to pray. I remember I would go, I remember visiting a church, and me and Tabitha was together, and we visited this church. This was up in Washington, D.C. area, and these people just start running. They shot, shot up down the aisle, shot up down the aisle, and I looked at her. I was scared. <laughs> I said, what is going on? And I start looking for the door like, Lord, help me get out of this church because I prejudged them without understanding their behavior. Because nobody sat down and gave me understanding of biblical praise. I thought what they were doing was weird. And I got it honestly, Pastor Jimmy. I really did. I remember growing up in a church, and I love all the people that I grew up with, but I remember when people would get the Holy Ghost. That's what they said. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. I found out later it was them. But they thought it was, they go crazy. I mean, crazy, screaming, going crazy. And then some other big sister would come and just wave her and wave her down so she'd cool down, right? And then another sister would come from the right and take their glasses off because, you know, you don't want to go to Lens Crafters tomorrow, break your glasses and everything with your praise. So we're going to take your glasses off so you can buck and go crazy. And they said that was the Holy Ghost. And as a kid, I said, if that's the Holy Ghost, I don't want that. <laughs> Whatever that is, I don't, don't sign me up for that one. You know what I'm saying? And then I prejudged everybody else because I found out it wasn't the Holy Ghost. It was emotionalism because the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He will not take your tongue out your mouth and make you pray in tongues. He will only submit to what you allow. He wants to be invited into every situation. So part of me was like, these folk crazy, and so I didn't want to give them praise and all that stuff. But the other part of me, I was just uncomfortable. And um, I like to be in control. And the reason some of you all don't surrender is because you want to be in control. And your flesh don't like praise because it's not natural, it's supernatural. And so natural praise is I have to be in control. Kingdom praise is I surrender. And so you're going to have to make up your mind at some place in your Christianity whether I will surrender to God's will no matter your enneagram and no matter your personality. Would the church say amen? So let's do some teaching today. If you're ready, say I'm ready. What is praise? Write this down. Here's a general definition of praise. And we got to go. I got, I got, we got to go. We got to go. The expression of one's gratitude and respect towards God. Okay? General definition. It's an expression of your gratitude, your respect towards God. Years ago, I learned this, that we worship God for who he is. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the Waymaker, the Beginning and the End. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Elohim, El Elyon, all of the names of God. We worship him for who he is. But we praise God for what he's done what he's doing, and what we know he's going to do. <laughs> now, has God done anything for anybody who's in this place today? You should give him praise. That, that, that's, that's all that it is. Like, how many of y'all, you used to cuss like every day, but now you every other day? You know what I'm saying? You used to smoke the whole pack. Now you're down to two cigarettes. Okay, praise God for where he's brought you from, okay? And so we praise him for what he's done, but we also praise him for what he's doing. Is God doing anything in your life today? The trick of that is that some of you all, you look at what you're going through and you don't realize what he's protecting you from. You look at your problems, so life doesn't have to be perfect for you to realize that God is moving. Let me, let me help you. You are in the United God Blessed States of America where you have freedom to worship God. You are in a place with AC, air condition is on right now, even though it's not very high. And you're in the place where you have multicultures and races all worshiping our God. God is doing something. But I love this part because we praise God for what he's about to do. 
Meaning that praise goes into tomorrow and it praises him today. Meaning that praise has prophetic insight to go into the future and dance in advance right now. Meaning that biblical praise, you don't just praise him because you got a new house and you got a new job. You praise him for the victory already been won on the cross and everything that you know there is more fighting for you than against you. So biblical praise has faith that's attached to it that I dance before the victory even shows up. Write this down. Biblical praise has its root in thanksgiving. And so praise and the prayer of thanksgiving, the pastor will talk last week, are very closely related. They both come from a heart of gratitude. Everybody say gratitude. They both are giving, given an attitude of joy and jubilee, all right? And so it's rooted in thanksgiving, all right? Now, the expression of that thanksgiving is what we call praise. Now, you guys know, hopefully, if not, you'll know now, the Old Testament for the most part is written in Hebrew. New Testament is re- written in Greek. And to me, when I really want to understand the depths of something, I'll try to look at the original meaning of words. And if you go back in the Old Testament, this English word praise comes from several different Hebrew words. Are you ready for this? This is the teaching portion. Act like you like it. The first one is the word tehillah. Everybody say tehillah. It means to praise vocally with songs or shouts. Come on, somebody. And it's closely related to the Hebrew name for the book of Psalms, Tehillim. So the book of Psalms, which actually comes before the book of Proverbs, the definition of Psalm means praises. So if you ever want to know how to really give God praise, you need to start studying a division of Psalm every single day and figure out how David praised God even when it was bad. You know what I mean? And so Tehillah is a type of praise that's primarily heard, whereas other types of praise are seen. What I mean by that is that your praise is not supposed to be quiet, and that's just not what we do. No. Your praise is supposed to be heard. So biblical praise is noisy. The next one is halal. Everybody say halal. Interestingly enough, the word halal refers to a boastful and loud praising of God often found in the Old Testament 96 times total. Okay? Originally, the word had to do with shining. Ask your neighbor, are you shining for Jesus? Ask them very quickly, are you shining for Jesus? Are you shining? Online, are you shining for Jesus? The word hallelujah comes from this word. It also means to boastfully worship in a way that can even make you look foolish. So if you're dignified and, you know, I just got my master's and I'm working on my PhD right now and, you know, I have my Armani suit on and I just don't praise like that. That's what everybody else do. You can't be biblical. Because biblical praise makes you look crazy sometimes. And so actually, them people that were praising God that scared me, they were probably a lot more closer to Jesus than I ever was at that point. David praised God in such a way that his own wife ridiculed him and said that a king should not dance like that. But David had the outer garment of a king, but the undergarment of a priest. And that's why God has called you to Davidic worship where you are a person in authority. Yes, you are a CEO. Yes, you are a famous athlete. Yes, you are a person who is in control, but you need to have the undergarments of a priest that goes into the presence of God, for you are a king and a priest. Yada, or no, let's do Shavak. Shavak is whereas halal is a boisterous clamoring of praise. Shavak is more dignified in the manner of speaking. It's as if speaking to royalty in a lofty and loud way. How great are you, God? I worship you. There is no God like unto you. You know, you got to go to God sometimes as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It is also described as a battle cry and a victorious shout. In the middle of a pandemic, we need a victorious shout. We don't need a quiet praise. We need a battle cry praise that our God is still the God of the army of angels and he can do what he wants to do when he wants to do. But it goes beyond just shouts. It implies that your whole being is in these praises, expressed through vocal declarations. So when you praise God, it ain't supposed to be the golf clap. Oh, that song was nice for me today. (laughs) It's amazing the people who get offended at our our choice of songs. We didn't sing their jam today, but Jesus had no worship team with him, and he did miracles. It's amazing our fixation on music instead of real praise. I'll get to that in just a moment. But anyway, it's with your whole being. Yes, Jesus. 
It's kind of how you act at the football game. It's like what everything that's in you, you want to give them praise. It's not cute praise. It's not sedity praise. It's like with let everything that has breath. Go ahead and ask your neighbor, are you breathing? Are you breathing? If not, we got a serious issue today. But it says, let everything that has breath give them praise. And it's with your whole being. Let's move on. You die. It means to publicly worship with the vigorous extending of hands and giving worship or adoration. It means to cast forth or casting forth praise or casting forth your hands. It carries this idea of a child reaching for their parents as an act of surrender. So when you see Pastor Ken on the front row doing like this towards God, don't think I'm loony. I got revelation. When you see your neighbor with tears in their eye reaching towards their daddy like this, they understand something about biblical praise. All right? And the last one I call it my Obama praise is Barack. And that was a joke. <laughs> Don't stone me for the joke. I'm just God. Barack means to bow down or kneel before the Lord in quiet worship and adoration. It carries the sense that the physical posturing of the body and humble kneeling reflects the posture of the heart that God alone is king and we yield to him. And so it is not strange to see the church doing this in worship. It is not strange to see people in church doing this. This actually should be the norm. But if you're waiting for the worship leader to lead you to this place, you don't really understand what worship is. I don't need a song to lead me there. I don't need my favorite singer to lead me there. I don't need music to lead me there. I'm going to let God's word lead me there. And whenever you get a revelation, don't wait on anybody to lead you to the place of Barak. So let's go to the word. Everybody say, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hebrews 13, 15, let's read this together. It says, therefore by him, let us continually offer the what? Sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I like the scripture says, it says continually. That means that we don't praise God just on Sundays. It's a lifestyle. So I'm gonna praise God breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, before I go to bed, midnight snack, continually. And I love it that it says, give them a sacrifice of praise. Because sometimes you don't feel like praising God. Anybody ever come into a worship setting and it's like, oh man, I just had a really bad day. I was stuck in traffic. And you don't feel like praising him. What do you do? You give him a sacrifice of praise. That means that I'm going to praise God in the middle of my circumstances, in spite of what's going on in my life. And you have to teach your teenager specifically what real praise is. Because especially with young people, they be like, I just don't feel God. Your feelings ain't got nothing to do with your choice. And some of y'all act just like them children. I just don't feel God. What your feelings got to do with it? Feelings follow choices. I praise God because the word tells me to praise God. So when it says lift up holy hands, listen, I can have, I got soreness. I got to lift this one up for a minute, then lift this one up. Like we all got natural problems that are happening in worship. You know what I'm saying? Somebody need deodorant over on this aisle over here. It's like, but I'm still going to give him praise, not because I feel like it, because it is my sacrifice unto him. Because he sacrificed himself on the cross for me. Oh, it's getting looser now. I feel it. Come on. Psalm 71. Let's go to Psalm 71. Watch this one here. Psalm 71 says this. My mouth is filled with your praise. I hope you can say this when you go home. And I'm declaring your splendor all day long. Here's the thing. You have to make up your mind today. In your mouth, do you talk about your problems or your praise? But you can't have both. And some of you all have your mouth so filled with your problems that you ain't got time to give God praise. And it's amazing how we love to talk about our problems. I can't get in the meat and the coronavirus and they laying off and the injustices and blah, 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 blah. And when you fill your mouth with problems, you push out the potential for praise. And so you have to make a choice every day of your life whether to talk about your problems or to give God praise who will help you overcome your problems. Instead of going to God about how big your problems is, go to your problems about how big your God is and start, oh, I wish I had somebody online that knows I'm preaching better than you saying amen. That's what real praise is. Are y'all here with me today? And so this is what I want you to know. Here's three things. Write these down. This is what I want you to know about praise. Number one is that praise is a lifestyle. Come on, say it with me. Praise is a lifestyle. It's not what you do the first 20 minutes of church as we sing four songs. It's what you do as a lifestyle, Pastor Stephen. And newsflash, here it is. You don't need music to praise God. 
So the school year started, right? I called a family meeting. Y'all know I got three kids. I got one in high school, middle school, one in elementary. And I said, listen, in the summer, y'all was on your devices too much. You was just stuck to your cell phone, stuck to your iPad. We're going to make some changes around here, right? And I said, come on in. You know, people come in with attitudes. Like, well, we got to meet there. Because I said so. Make your face know that right now. <laughs> all right? And so I said, this is what we're going to do. All right? All my kids, they live upstairs. Me and Tabitha, we have a bedroom downstairs. And we said, no more electrical devices upstairs. No TVs, no laptops, no nothing. Now, one took the laptop. We got to work on that when we get home. But I said, nothing. Matter of fact, your cell phones, I want them on the kitchen counter by 7 p.m. every single night, okay? And so if you want to go upstairs, have some alone time, do that. Do that with a book. Do it with a Bible. Do it with the presence of the Lord. Just do it, but don't do it with te technology because they're too stuck on their phones, right? And then one of them got smart. And I'm not talking about, like, smart. I'm talking about intelligent. And this is what they said. She said, um, well, I, I, I want to do my first 15, Dad, and my worship playlist is on my phone. And I was like, oh. mm, she got me on that one. It took me two whole days to figure this out. I'm sitting around like, oh, we're going to have to give her her phone because I don't want to hinder her worship. And then it dawned on me that you don't need to listen to somebody else worship for you to worship. Oh my God, you thought you were worshiping because you got the Maverick City album, and that ain't worshiping, that's you listening to everybody else worship. And what I found in the American church is that so many people don't know how to worship because you watch them worship. But worship ain't supposed to be them worship, it's supposed to be you worshiping God. Woo, glory to God. We've been spectating when we should be participating. <laughs> And so somebody needs to go home today, and you need to take, go through a season, no playlist, go old school hymns, you know what I'm talking about, Pastor Steve, and Google some songs. Because some of the secular music, you can repeat it. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, when I was dead broke, man, I couldn't picture this. 50 inch screen, money green, leather sofa, got two rides, a limousine with a chauffeur. I'm like, oh my God, that was 25 years ago, and I don't know one rap Christian song. And I was like, oh my God, right? Because I was preaching this last week, and I was like, you know what? You need to go home and learn some Christian music. Like, get these lyrics in your heart, because some of y'all know Katy Perry, and you know Bruno Mars, but when it comes to Christian, we got to put the words up here for you to have any clue where we're going. And you need to go home and get praise in your heart, so in the midnight hour, it can come out of your mouth and change your life. <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> I got to move on. Number two, this is what I want you to know about praise is that praising God has benefits. <clears throat> the Bible says that he abides in the praises of his people. It says he abides in the praises of Israel, but we understand in his people, the principle. So when you praise God, he makes up a home in that praise. The Bible says that praise steals the avenger, S-T-I-L-L-S. That means it stops the devil in its tracks. If you ever feel a battle with depression, anxiety, and addiction, start giving God praise for your freedom because it stops the devil right there. It has benefits, and your praise is a weapon, and you need to know how to use this weapon. Some of you all are in spiritual warfare without the full armor of God, and you don't know how to use your weapon of praise. And the Bible says that the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days and seven times on the seventh day, and they released these trumpets, and they opened up their mouth and shouted, and the walls came tumbling down. Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, that Jehoshaphat heard his enemies were coming against him, and he put the praise and worship leaders in front of the army. And they came into a great victory because praise is a weapon. Yeah. Paul and Silas is at midnight shackled in a dungeon, and they start singing, and they start giving God praise, and every prison door is open, and there's a great earthquake because your praise, and I'll give you one more, number three, praise is for participating and not spectating. Would the church say amen? amen. Come on, somebody. If you're at home, would you just say, say amen at your device now, all right? And I want you guys to know this as my worship team comes, is that right now you're sitting in a miracle, and I need you to know that. Matter of fact, I want you to grab three or four people around you and just touch them and say, this is a miracle. Please put it in the chat online because some of y'all can be sitting in a miracle and you have no clue. We are a multicultural, multiracial, multigenerational church in the South of this doggone it, God bless it, United States of America. And we all come from different backgrounds. There's some people in here 
that you are rich, some people are poor, some people are educated, some people are not educated, some people are smart, some people are your neighbor, and <laughs> God has called us all to be one big family. Go ahead and get three people and say, this is a miracle, this is a miracle. Because if you don't know it's a miracle, you'll pick it apart for dumb reasons. If you don't know what it took to build what looks like heaven, you'll pick it apart for dumb reasons. When you don't realize that this place is filled with the glory of God, and this has been God's intention all the time, and he's been trying to birth it into the earth realm, but it's been getting aborted and boarded and boarded with the we versus them, but we've done something here that heaven is shouting about. This is a miracle. And with so many different cultures and backgrounds and ages and ideologies and theological degrees and backgrounds, we think all kinds of different stuff when it comes to praise. But God's called us to unity. And there is a commanded blessing when brethren dwell together in unity. There is a sound from heaven, church, that we can tap into that ain't a black sound. It ain't a Hispanic sound. It ain't a white sound. It ain't a Pentecostal sound. It ain't a denominational sound. It ain't got no, it's a kingdom sound. It's what we call kingdom praise. It ain't got nothing to do with your favorite artist. It got everything to do with my heart towards his word. And my God is worthy of a Barak. My God is worthy of a Halal. My God is worthy. And I don't care what I'm comfortable with. He saved me. Come on, he's giving me grace. He's giving me mercy. Say that I'm crazy. Say what you want to, but he's the one that saved me. It was crazy to get on the cross. It was crazy to get beat with a cat of nine tails. He's worthy of praise. Give the microphone here. Hallelujah. So, everybody standing, if you have legs, this would be your time to stand. And here's the deal. Even if you're at home watching this and you're not driving, don't try this if you're driving, but if you're not driving, please stand because you need to turn your home into a palace of praise. And I'm gonna give you very quickly an opportunity to do the word that we just heard. So go ahead and tell your neighbor, neighbor, give me some space because I'm about to get my dog on dance on up in this place. Come on, push him, push him. Come on, get in the aisles. You can halal, you can bow down. Let's go. Hey! He's worthy. Hey! Come on, put those hands together. Oh, we thank you. Come on, sing it. Wandering into the night. Wandering a place to hide. This weary soul. Bad. 
Come on. I don't see y'all praising yet. Come on. Come on, clap those hands. That's a form of praise. Oh, I see something happening. Come on. Even if you can't dance. Listen, you ain't got to be Usher, but let's move side to side. Let's go. Right, left, right. Right, left, right. Right. Is everybody moving? If your neighbor ain't moving, push them. Right, left, right. Right, left. All right, we're going to make it complex. Here we go. Y'all ready? Like. Has God been good to anybody? Has he called you out of darkness? Place you in the light? And now march, march, hey. Oh, shoot. We are signing you up in the army of the Lord. Somebody say, aye, aye, Captain. And I want you to imagine yourself stomping on addictions, stomping on depression, stomping on perversion, stomping on the crisis in your identity. Every chain be broke. Every chain be broke. Every chain be broke. Sing. Get up, get up, get up. Hey, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Hey, get up out of that grave. Let's go. Get up, get up, get up. I can't hear you. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Y'all sing it. Get up, get up, get up. You said. Get up out of that grave. Cause he's doing Reservation, and I need you to kick off the Corona cobwebs. Now, I don't know where you are on the Myers and Briggs and any of your gram, but I'm going to ask you to get buck wild for a minute. Jubilee means to act clamorously foolish in a spin about wildly. Dance, dance, dance. Come on and dance, dance, dance. Come on, there's freedom. Sometimes we get you so hype in church when you go home and you don't have a drummer yeah. and you don't have a pianist and you don't have this curly haired dude telling you to march and crazy, crazy stuff. And I need you to know how to transition this to when you get home. Because truthfully, all you need is your voice and all you need is these hands. Yeah. Cause here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Watch me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to 
Jesus be the center of it all, and Jesus be the center of it all, from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, nothing else matters. world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, it's you. And Holy Spirit, you are Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, in my heart, Lord, Lord, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Don't you love that? Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. You know, really, some of you all, you just need some old school stuff. You know, like, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, he was. Shed white as snow, and I surrender all, and I surrender all, all to be my blessed state. The Lord loves it when we sing to him, guys. No playlist needed. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me. The horse is hot. For God will do what he said he would do. He's not a man that should lie. And he will come through. For God will do what he said he would do. Yeah, 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 yeah. She said it sounds good to Jesus. It don't sound good to us, but it sounds good to him. You do that at home. Amen. You all get my point today? From this day forward, I need you to make a choice to when you come in this church, give a kingdom praise. It's a sacrifice of praise. I don't care what, what is happening in our world. I don't care what ideology or theology you thought you had about praise. You should come out of your car like this. Thank God I'm in the house. We shouldn't tell people to lift their hands. You know what's crazy about a kingdom church that has kingdom praise? You can be the praise and worship leader from your seat. I'm not saying distract us because I'm old school. I've been in church before people bring their own tambourine. 
be like, where you get that from? Like, you ain't even come to rehearsal. You just roll out with an instrument out of bed. Like, I've been in church, people bring their own flags, and you got to go stop them. Like, stop, stop that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there's moments of silence in the church where it's time to start bringing. And it's almost like we all know there's a corporate anointing where we know we're supposed to lift the hallelujah. And then there's moments where it's supposed to be nothing but silence. And the Holy Spirit will lead us as a flock in those moments if you're sensitive towards his leading. Amen. I'll give you this. Oh, Jesus, I got to go. I want to give you an opportunity to um, give you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life because that's where all praise starts. Okay. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you can admit that you've ever sinned in your life, the good news is you don't have to pay the price for your sin because Jesus paid it for you. And all you have to do is to accept his forgiveness today. You don't have to be a perfect person to be a forgiven one, but you do need to repent, to turn away from who you used to be for who God's calling you to be on today. So if that's you, that's the gospel in 30 seconds. And you say, Pastor, I would love for you to pray with me. I would love to pray for you. So I'm going to ask you, if that's you, to lift your hand on the count of three so that I can pray for you. And so if that's you, lift your hand in one, two, three. Lift it up high. Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else online? If that's you online, please lift your hand. Nobody prays alone. Let's pray this prayer together. Everybody join in, even online. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I give you me. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. You are my Lord and my Savior, and I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody, put your hands together and give God praise. Welcome to the family of God. If you're watching online, make sure you text the word SAVE to the number that's on the screen below. Share this message with somebody that you know has been stuck in their faith and they need a kingdom praise. Amen. Are you all excited to be in the house of God today? Will you bring this at 930 next service? Would you get on the dream team? If you signed up to get on the dream team, don't make our staff call you and chase you down. You should give up your life and say, here I am. How can I help? because we got a lot of people we want to reach in this region. I feel like giving God praise.